I've lived in Croydon for the past 11 years. Um, my dad's owned this business for the past 17 years. Um, when we moved into Croydon, it was for a better lifestyle, for a better education. We have a lot of family within central London, east London, that's where I was born. Um, so for us to move out of that whole thing that we were in, like a world of our own, um, it was hard because we were really close with our family members. So, yeah, it did hurt me to know that where I live is looked down upon now. Between what happened in Tottenham and what happened in Croydon, there is no connection. What they did was pure greed. How did you find it on the night of the riot? We find it quite intimidating. Um, there was a lot of people, um, tens of tens, I would say at least about 70, 80 youths, uh, running in and around all this area, um, going back and forth with bikes and TVs and uh, stereos and stuff. It was, it was quite intimidating, but after about an hour, hour and a half, we realised that they weren't here to harm any locals or any, any other people, so long as they, we, didn't, we didn't confront them with like, you know, taking the goods and stuff. What did they gain by burning down Rio's Corner? What did they gain by burning down that laundry off London Road? Or any house or flat or for a woman having to jump out of her own home, her own safe home, like, you know, to save her life? That's what made me angry, like, people are like animals, like the real animals within people show that night. But then, young people actually got along. Like, that feud that exists disappeared. Like, how can that make sense? How can it be that on a negative day, people come together rather than on a good day? All the neighbours here, whether they're resident or business owners, they were all here. Yeah. Every one of us were on the phone calling the police. I was on the phone three times for 15 minutes on hold to call the police. Nothing, there was no answer, nothing like that. We saw riot police come by and um, they, they, were, they were like, you know, they were here for about literally 10 minutes and then they went. There's always been that, you know, gap you know, between young people and police officers of stop and search problems and, you know, human rights, how they're being treated. But I think since the rights, you know, the gaps increased. When I'm in Croydon, for example, I do see police officers now, if you're in more than a group of three, they tell you to split up. It's like you're labelling them to do wrong. So they're like, you know, that whole attitude, OK, then if you're labelling me to do wrong, then I'll just do it, kind of thing. Like, you know, I'll act upon what you're labelling me as. The most disturbing thing was that we did saw parents, actually, um, dropping kids off on the main road and making the gun parking around the corner and, you know, like, waiting for them to pick up TVs and um, cycles and you know, putting them in the boot and going home, I suppose. The way I see it, Croydon was respected for its calmness, economic wealth. Now it's just worse than any other borough, actually, because we were highlighted the most. When I'm older, I do, would like to move out, definitely. I don't think I want to stay in Croydon, but obviously I want to stay in London. But I wouldn't stay in Croydon anymore, I don't think, personally.